The sanitizer is really the thing that prevents any kind of problems with your water and it's for the health of your family also. So it's very important that you look at the sanitizer no matter who you're buying for and make sure you look at one of the best ones on the market. When we started building pools in the 60s, the sanitizers available were essentially what you see up here, HTH. Now HTH is a uh, it's, it's a granular chlorine and the way it was dispensed into the pool is every day you had to go and sprinkle it on the, on, on the pool's water, which was, was fine and it, it was very effective. The, the downsides of it is it's a toxic chemical. It was a daily chore. It quickly dissipates in the sunlight. So in other words, you put it in first thing in the morning by noon, it's probably all gone. And so it had a very short shelf life and also it was kind of dangerous too. If you left it out in the, with the lid off and it rained, this thing could catch fire. So we kind of looked at maybe getting away from that as we developed into the, into the seasons. And we went to liquid chlorine, which again is a, an effective sanitizer, but it had its drawbacks. It bleaches things if it spills. You can fill them up and refill them you know, every week. But again, it was a bit of a chore. The next evolution in pool sanitation was basically the chlorine tablets, or pucks as a lot of people call them. Uh, again, uh, they were very effective as a sanitizer and a bit more convenient in that you could put them in a floating chlorinator or an automatic chlorinator. See, you weren't sprinkling it on your pool every night. You could hook it up for probably a week at a time. Um, they were relatively inexpensive, they were effective, but again, they had their, their drawbacks. One of the drawbacks is, again, it's a toxic chemical. Uh, if you drop one in your pool and you had a vinyl liner, for instance, it would bleach out the liner. That was something happening quite a bit. Um, the stabilizer level of the pool may rise too much, and basically the only way to address that would be to empty pretty much half the pool. So it had its drawbacks. After that, they came out with bromine. Now, bromine, again, is an effective sanitizer. In fact, chlorine and bromine are the only two sanitizers approved by Health Canada as a, as a, as a, a chemical. Bromine, a little more effective than, the, uh, than the, the chlorine, but it was more effective in hot water, so it's very common in hot tubs. Again, it was unaffected by sunlight, which is good. No chlorine odor, but again, it was toxic and corrosive to equipment. A major leap forward was the introduction of the Z tablet or Z puck. What made that very, very effective was it was unaffected by sunlight. It contains zinc, which is an excellent algicide. It's slow dissolving. It won't harm filters, heaters, and it may be dispensed in an automatic system or just drop it into the skimmer. So that was basically the, the first major uh, evolution. Again though, it's, it's a toxic chemical and it may bleach a liner if it was dropped in the pool. So that's a couple of the negatives. A lot of people are under the misrepresentation from a lot of companies that a salt system is a non-chlorine pool. It, it is not. What it does is it converts sodium chloride into liquid chlorine. So what you're doing is you're really going back to the beginning is what you're doing. What made it convenient was you don't have to handle chlorine. In other words, the salt was converted to chlorine via a salt chlorinator. So that became very popular in the last 10, 15 years. And a lot of pool companies, us included, we kind of jumped on the bandwagon because we were told by the manufacturer it had no side effects, it was wonderful. Well, after a few years, we found out there were some side effects, basically. Um, one of the things we discovered is probably the most expensive sanitizer on the market overall, not just from the cost of the unit, but what it costs you on an ongoing basis, plus what it does to your equipment. It um, is highly corrosive to pool equipment. In fact, a lot of manufacturers of heaters and a lot of pool equipment, especially anything that has a steel base, 
they will void the, the warranty if in fact you have a salt system. It'll say right on their warranty. So that's something you should be you should be concerned about. But one of the big things was it became uh, so toxic that a lot of places, especially in the U.S., have banned it completely. And in the GTA area, you've got uh, Toronto, Mississauga, and now Hamilton, that if you pump any water treated with a salt chlorinator into their, into their sewers, or essentially what happens, it could end up in the rivers. And it can kill marine life, is what the problem was. It's got such a high uh, content of chlorides that it, it's very toxic. So what you have to do with this system is you have to dechlorinate it before you backwash your filter or you pump your pool down. Um, the other thing that is really, really bad is um, it causes scale, staining, cloudy water, and it doesn't work under certain, you know, 60, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's got its pluses, but the negatives far outweigh the pluses. Ozone, what it does is it kills bacteria and viruses as the water passes through it. It's non-corrosive, non-toxic, um, there's no chemical odor. It reduces the need for a chlorine or a bromine pretty dramatically. Um, on the negative side, it doesn't build up a sanitizer in the water. It kills the uh, viruses and bacteria at the source, but it, it, it's incapable of building up any kind of a sanitizer level in the water itself. It's very difficult to monitor, to monitor and um, you have to use a, a chlorine or a bromine or something with it to be effective. Ionization probably um, is the least expensive way to sanitize a pool by far. It kills bacteria and viruses, which is what you want a sanitizer to do, it prevents algae growth. Uh, it has no effect on the skin, so you don't get irritated eyes or, or, or itchy skin. It has no effect on the pH of a pool uh, water as opposed to a salt system which drives the pH pretty high and you have to be bringing it down constantly. So this has no effect. It's totally non-corrosive to any equipment, unaffected by sunlight, and you're going to reduce your chlorine or bromine requirement by probably about 90%. Now, what we recommend uh, to all our customers is basically put, put, put a, an ionizer on your pool. It's about half the price of a salt system. You don't have to be lugging these big bags of salt into your pool every year. You don't have to worry about pH bounce. And uh, with something like the, the z puck that we have that has zinc in it, this zinc helps clarify the water and basically what you're doing is you're dropping one into your skimmer once a week on a small on a on a on a uh, large pool once every two weeks on, on a, a small pool it builds up copper silver and zinc in the water itself now the, anytime you put an algae site in a pool it's always copper based mostly so the copper is what kills the algae the silver is what sanitizes the water and the zinc prevents staining so with this system you get all the benefits without any of the negatives. If I have a relative with a pool, or my own pool, or anybody I know, we we'll always recommend that you go with ionization. It is by far the, the best for any product on the market at this time.